I'm gonna show you a very simple strategy that I use to get over half a million views on Facebook. And the best part is that it also works on Instagram as well. All you need is access to Meta Business Manager, which looks like this. Once you're inside, you're gonna click into Ads Manager and we're gonna begin what's called a prospecting campaign. That means we're going to show our videos to brand new people that have never heard of us before. That's different from a retargeting campaign which reaches people who already know about you, like your followers and your website visitors. If you wanna learn about retargeting, I already have a video walking you through how to set that up, and I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check out next. But for today, we're gonna to try to reach a brand new audience, a cold audience, so that we can get brand new people watching our music videos for the very first time, and thus expanding our reach for our music. We're gonna to start today by clicking the green create button, which will prompt Facebook to ask us what type of campaign we would like to create today. The campaign objective we're going to choose is an engagement campaign. So go ahead and click the engagement checkbox and then click continue. Now all we have to do is work through our three part campaign setup. There's the campaign, then the ad set, and then the ad creative, which will be our video. And we just selected the campaign type, but now we're gonna edit the campaign settings. Now under campaign name, we're going to name this campaign so it summarizes the whole purpose of our advertising goal today. So I'm gonna title this something along the lines, music video prospecting campaign. And then I also added a reminder what kind of audience I want this campaign to be focusing on, but we're gonna choose our audience later. Next, we're gonna scroll down and we're going to skip all of these settings until we get to Advantage Campaign Budget. We're gonna turn this on because this will allow us to set our budget on the campaign level. We're gonna set our budget to just $2 per day, which should be doable for pretty much anyone. Once you have your campaign budget set, just click the blue Next button at the bottom right, and then we'll be able to start configuring our ad set settings on on the ad set level. Now remember, the campaign ad set and the ad creative all have their own settings, but they work together to create our full advertising setup. For example, we already set up our budget on the campaign level, so you won't need to do that again on any of the other levels of the setup. So let's focus on our ad set. Remember, the ad set is the place where we choose our audiences. So I'm gonna name this ad set a general idea of the types of audiences I'm going to choose. And today we're gonna to use something called interest targeting. So I'm gonna name this cold audience interest targeting. That looks good. Remember these names are just for us. So I like to make them descriptive and they don't have any settings attached to them. We're going to choose our settings down below. So in the next box, conversion, we need to select our conversion event. That's kind of like setting the goal so that Facebook knows it's actually optimizing towards the right thing. And we want our goal to be on our ad. That's how we get engagement on our posts and that's how we're gonna get the views that we want. Next, once we have that set, we're going to scroll down and choose the engagement type which is already correctly set to video views. Then for the performance goal, we do want to maximize through plays, which will get us the longer video view. We don't want two second views. So all of this is the perfect setup for our music videos. Under show more options, we're going to leave this as is. And lastly, we're going to skip over dynamic creative because we already posted our video to either Instagram or Facebook so that we can get a lot of social proof onto our profiles. If we use dynamic creative, it's going to be what's called a hidden page post where the advertisement doesn't exist and it doesn't live on your feed. We chose to go the route where all of that engagement and all of those views are going to be on your actual profile because it's just better that way. So because we want that social proof visible, we're going to skip past dynamic creative and a lot of other settings that conflict with this setup. Next, let's scroll down to budget and schedule. What I always recommend is never setting an end date so that if your ad is performing really well, you could just continue using this ad to grow your music brand. If you set an end date and that end date passes, then your ad is over and it's kind of hard to bring it back to life. I always love to have the option to turn the ad on or off as I need as an artist and I can do that just by using these blue toggles that Facebook provides. So being sure to leave the end date unchecked, I'm gonna 
gonna scroll down and this is the fun part where we define our audience. We're gonna skip past custom audiences because that's more for a retargeting setup. I show you that in another video that I'll link at the top right of this video. But for today, we're gonna to do cold audience interest targeting. And in order to do that, we need to head down to the detailed targeting box right here. This is where Facebook allows you to add demographics, interests, or behaviors that you can use to target potential fans for your music. But before we enter anything into this box, we need to address this top area here, location, age, and gender. A lot of artists are tempted to be very specific and very narrow in these demographic categories, but I would encourage you to keep these broad so that Facebook can be free to optimize in the best way possible to get the most results for your budget. If you limit the options for Facebook, that in general is going to raise the cost of your ads. So in order to get the best deal and the best results, it's better to go broad. So first, under locations, I'm actually going to copy and paste my tier one list that I've developed for my students who are learning ads from me. The course is called the Spotify Growth Formula, and it's a university level marketing training that specifically focuses on growing your Spotify and your music platforms. There's over a hundred video lessons diving into the complete meta business manager tool so you can not only grow your Spotify, but also your Instagram and your Facebook as well. This is one of the most powerful courses we offer here at the Indie Music Academy, and I highly recommend it to every independent musician who's interested in taking music marketing back into their own hands and actually being in control of their growth and their future as an artist. If you're interested in joining, I'll leave a link in the description below. But for now, I'm going to paste these countries so that I can import them into my audience setup. I'm gonna add these 26 locations, and this is perfect. Now under age, I'm just gonna slightly reduce the age down to the age of 62, just to narrow it a little bit, but I do wanna keep this wide open. If you feel compelled to limit the age even more because it makes sense to your music brand, that's totally fine. But remember, don't limit it too much because that's going to increase your ad costs. And then lastly for gender, we're going to keep all genders. And now for the fun part, this is where we add the detailed targeting interests that Facebook is going to use to show our ads to the right people. And what I recommend doing is what I call an interest audience stack. This is a great place to start for beginners and we literally just stack interests on top of one another to give Facebook a lot of options and it's a great way to get a lot of value in one ad set. The way you do this is by manually typing some artist names that are in the Facebook interest database. Not every artist is gonna be there, but if you can find three or four that represent a similarity to what your music sounds like, you can then use the suggestions feature to spin off more interests until you create a stack of about 10 interests that are similar artists to your music. Let's do that right now. Since this is for my music, I'm gonna start with Harry Styles and I'm going to click him in the dropdown, then Ed Sheeran would be a great option for me. And then another really good one that represents my sound would be One Republic. And once I have three, I can start using the suggestions feature and start picking and choosing based off of what I feel is similar to my music and add them into the stack. So Shawn Mendes definitely would be in there. Coldplay, I think I saw. Imagine Dragons is a little too uh, upbeat for me, but probably One Direction since I'm a pop guy. And let's see, Nick Jonas should be good. The script should be good. And now I have a pretty solid stack that Facebook is going to use to draw in the right people to my ad campaign. Feel free to add as many artists as you want to this stack and I suggest around 8 to 10 to start. Scrolling down just a little bit, you'll see this checkbox called Advantage Detail Targeting. And I recommend that you leave this unchecked for now because we really don't know if this is going to improve performance or if it's just going to dilute your audience. That's the pro and con here by checking this box. It's going to reach beyond your selection, but it could bring in the wrong people. So this is a test for a later date, and you can always keep this in the back of your mind if you want to mess around with Ads Manager in your own time. Next, you're gonna see a new section in Meta Ads Manager that they just rolled out. It's called Beneficiary and Payer. And all you need to do is either click your business name in the dropdown or use freeform text. What I recommend doing is always using the freeform text and typing out your artist name so it always makes sense with your music brand. So here I'm gonna type in my name 
as the beneficiary and payer for this ad. Now, last but certainly not least, in fact, probably one of the most important steps to all this, we need to change Advantage Plus placements to manual placements. And there's a very specific reason for this. We want to be in control of the actual experience that the user is going to have with our ad. If we keep this to the default, then our ad is gonna show up in all these different places around the internet. And I don't want that. And I don't want that for you either. So let's check manual placements. And what we're gonna do is we're only going to select the best experiences so that our brand can be presented in the best light. So uh, I'm gonna uncheck apps and sites because I don't want this showing on random weird sites that I don't approve of. I don't want this in the search results. Pretty much I don't want this anywhere except for Instagram Reels. Just as a reminder, this is what the actual ad looks like and I wanna match the placement so that it fits the footage of my ad. And I'm going to set up the ad in the next step, but this is what my post looks like and that's why it's so important to match the placement to the footage. So Instagram Reels is a must, and you honestly have a couple of options at this point that I'm gonna leave up to you. You could also include Facebook Reels, and because of the vertical aspect ratio, this might also work well in Instagram Stories. All of those choices are going to work with the footage that I'm gonna use in my ad setup in the next step. So once you have the correct placements checked, and I think I'm gonna also check Facebook feed and Instagram feed, that should be good, five placements are selected. All they need to do to move to the next step is click the blue next button on the bottom. This is the visual and the video portion of the ad setup. And once again, just as a reminder, the ad creative lives inside of the ad set and the ad set lives inside of the campaign in this nested setup. So as a first step, I'm going to name my ad creative and because I already know what post it is, I'm just gonna name it the name of the song, which is my song, Broken. Next under identity, I just need to double check that this is gonna show on the right profiles and all of this is correct. Then under ad setup, this is where I need to specify that I'm gonna use an existing post because I already posted this to my Instagram feed. I'm gonna uncheck multi-advertiser ads because I don't wanna mix my ad with any other branding. I wanna keep it pure to my music brand. And then under ad creative, this is where I select the post. So I'm gonna click the select post button. Next, I'm gonna filter by Instagram and then you're gonna see the post that I just posted at the top of the list. I'm gonna click right here to select and then I'm gonna click the continue button at the bottom. So now I just imported this existing published page post into my ad campaign, which is fantastic. All of the views and all of the engagement that I'm gonna get from this ad campaign is going to publicly show on my profile, which is great social proof. This is truly a pro level strategy and I show you so many more marketing strategies for your music in my course that once again is linked in the description below. So if you're interested in going deeper and learning this tool, I highly recommend you at least check it out and see if it's a good fit for you. And as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop a comment below this video. But now let's finish up the final steps of our ad setup. So we just imported our ad creative and Facebook gives us the option to optimize this with Advantage Plus Creative. To see if it's a fit, just click edit and then it'll show you a few options, but I don't think I'm gonna mess around with this today. It's not crucial. Next, Facebook gives you the option to add a button, which is something you can definitely experiment with. You can drop your website URL here or a Spotify song link or whatever you want, or you could leave it blank, which is what I recommend doing today because by leaving the button out, you're making your post look a little more organic and that should increase the engagement and increase the number of views and the comments you're gonna get on your advertisement. So there are pros and cons to adding this button and I'm gonna let you choose whatever you think is best for you. Last thing is tracking. So if you do have your Facebook pixel set up, you're gonna to wanna to click the website events button so that your pixel is tracking all the activity on this ad if anyone does click off of Facebook or off of Instagram. We do wanna make sure we're tracking those actions. So once you've scrolled all the way to the bottom, you are now finished with the setup. And the last thing to do is just click the green publish button at the bottom to make your ad campaign live. And this is going to show your video to the correct people because of the interest targeting that you set up. And they're gonna be people who've never experienced your music before because this is cold audience targeting. 
If you're interested in setting up a retargeting campaign, which targets your existing followers and fans, I have a video right here that shows you exactly how to set that up. And guys, if this video was helpful to you in any way, be sure to like and subscribe to support the channel, and I'll see you guys in a future video.